Hello guys, welcome to Irish Footy Vlogs and today we have a very special guest with you today and that's Will Seymour of Sligo Rovers. How are you, Will? You well? Yeah, doing well, surviving day by day, you know. It's uh, just chilling, really. You're back home in England at the moment, is that right? Yeah, yeah, back at my parents' um, near Newmarket, actually. So uh, just hanging out every day. And do you mind me asking, how old are your parents, roughly? Um, dad is... I think he's 63, and then mum is almost, I think she's 59. Yeah, they're kind of okay anyway, they're keeping well. Yeah, yeah, they're, um, you know, working from home. Uh, just have, they just, I think they have to go on like once a week or something like that, but it only, it's only for a few hours, and, you know, it's just on like a rotated schedule. So they're uh, keeping pretty isolated and stuff. They're getting sick of me right now, so that's all good. But, uh, yeah, they're fine, they're fine. Now, I hint a bit of an American accent there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You were born in Colorado, I believe. And you yeah, moved- yeah. So right. um, my my dad is, uh, he's American and my mom is English. And uh, I've kind of spent, you know, my whole life just living b- uh, back and forth between England and America. I went to like college in America, but then I did like primary and secondary school in England. So um yeah, just wherever I'm at the longest, is my accent will start to change. The longer I'm here, my accent will become English. And then if I went back to America, it will slowly become American. So it kind of tra- transforms every few months. You might get picked up by a bit of a Sligo accent as well. Oh, uh, no, I don't know about that. That's a, that's a strong accent. I don't know if I'll pick that one up. <laughs> Do you think yourself the football will be back this year, personally? What would be your personal opinion, opinion on it? And also, would you have serious reservations about actually going back? From a safety aspect, um, I think for me, it's like as a player. I mean, I don't think I'd have reservations about going back. I mean, for, for, I think it's more in terms of general health for everyone. It might not be good, but it's you know, if I'm gonna get sick, then you know, there's a lot of things I can get sick from realistically. But I don't want to. I don't want it to accelerate. You know, I, I would be terrible. I guess what I'm trying to say, it'd be terrible if we go back and a lot of players start getting sick. So it's just one of those things that, you know, anyone can get sick from anything, really. But it's just you don't want to exacerbate the problem by, you know, playing games. But in terms of do I think we'll be back? I, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to obviously get back and play games. But it's just I think a lot of leagues are looking around at each other and kind of saying, you know, oh, who's going to be the first one to go back? And they want to see how each other's going to do and stuff. So I don't really know. I mean... It would be nice, but at the same time, if it's not viable for people's health and public safety, then, you know, just call it off, I guess. I think there's a lot of eyes in the Bundesliga in Germany, isn't there, at the moment? Yeah, it's it's strange. You read stories, like, about, like, they're supposed to be, is it next week they're coming back? Or, Thanks. So. Yeah. yeah, and then they're still, like, one of the teams is still in, like, quarantine, and they're coming back in, like, a week or something like that. I So it's it's crazy. It's just... I guess it's one of those times no no one really has any answers. You know, you talk to people and it's kind of everyone's trying to find an answer kind of thing. Yeah, even over here, they're trying to look at a lot of solutions behind closed doors, et cetera, et cetera, regionalizing games. And it's just a bit, when I read all the reports, it's a little bit, they're scrambling a little bit. I know they're trying hard to find solutions, which is fair enough, but they don't quite get what they're doing exactly, I don't think. You know what I mean? You yeah, feel- it's... It's tough. Like, I know what you mean. It's, it's like you said, it's good they're trying to find a way to bring it back. But then I guess, um, you know, you want it to come back in an organized way and a way that is viable for everyone. And you don't just want any idea to kind of be the one they run with. But um, yeah, like, like I said, it's, it's tough because it's, it's one of those things this has never happened before. So no one really has any clear cut like answer or solution. Or so it's, it's one of those kind of things where everyone has to work together to kind of come up with the best idea I suppose yeah you're hoping really that it kind of brings out the human nature well whenever this gets cleared you just hope that um we've learned a lesson from a human side of it I think as well would you agree yeah. with that? I, I do I do agree I think like you said you know it's it's one of those things um I think a lot of people are taking stock of you know being able to spend time with family and and cherishing certain things that obviously aren't you know 
of uh, like available right now you know about mm. i think a lot of people are <laughs> really cherishing you know taking care of themselves like going outside and enjoying nature because i think you know like people are going crazy being stuck inside so i think people will appreciate you know being healthier and staying outdoors and that kind of stuff more now they play with a lot of clubs in the united states obviously, and certainly a few clubs which was your favorite experience which club did you like playing with the most i suppose um it's it's strange because i think like as a footballer like you when you're at different clubs obviously you take into stock like different things about you know where was the best place to live and the best team to be on obviously and i think i enjoyed a certain aspect of what everywhere i've been i mean i think in terms of the best team i was on was probably at cincinnati um and i you know i didn't get that many minutes i think i was one of the younger players there and still uh learning my trade and stuff but you know i think the the locker room aspect and how tight the team was and the banter and, and obviously the quality of player there was just you know it was, it was great and stuff but you know i think i enjoyed playing in reno we had a great team i think that was the best some of the best football i played you know very good on the deck football and stuff and, and i enjoyed the coach and all my teammates there but um when i was in vancouver i mean that was the best place to live by far but i guess that's like lower down the list if you ask any footballer so that's interesting who's the best player you came up against came up against um i mean i played against kaka in a preseason when i was at dallas and he was pretty good so yeah kaka <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I would say him. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like, like I said, there's a lot of really good players in the USL and the MLS that you know aren't big names, just like every league, you know. But uh, I think, yeah, I mean, Kaka was probably the best player I've come up against. But um, you know, there's a lot of little technical players and stuff in the USL that were really crafty players. And who who'd be the best player you played with in your review? Best player I've played with. It'd probably either be uh, Richie Ryan when I was at Cincy, or there was another player there. His name was Corbin Bone. Uh, yeah. He was a number 10, mm. and his, his nickname was Magic because just some of the stuff he would do with the ball was just – it was ridiculous. He was, just, he was a very good player, just very smart, like movement off the ball and tight spaces, and one, one and two touch play was great, and he was a really good finisher. So probably one of those two. Interesting. How, did you, how did it come about – your move to Sligo Rovers, basically. Um, well, like I said, I, I'd played with um, Richie at Cincy, uh, and that was 2018. And, you know, when I knew I was, you know, I was leaving Cincy and I was going to, you know, look, looking for another team, I know Richie had kind of brought up about, oh, you know, maybe going to Ireland and what do you think of this? And the, the standards are good. And, you know, he told me about his time there. And then... Um, I've stayed friends with Richie and, you know, I talk to him usually like every week or something like that. And uh, when I knew I was leaving Reno last year, he brought it up again and I, you know, I just went for it and we had a long talk and he kind of told me what it was about and, you know, I really liked it. And then it helped to that my, you know, obviously my parents and a lot of my family live in England, so I'd be back closer to that. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of, it was a combination of things and just kind of got talking to the club and then I got brought over. How big of an influence would Liam Buckley, the manager, have had on you coming over? Did you speak? Oh, yeah. He, he had a big influence. You know, I, I spoke to him a few times, and obviously he described, you know, the type of football he wants to play and what he's trying to do and, and you know, how it fit into that. So that was obviously a big draw. And, you know, like any time you talk to a coach, you get more of an understanding because you can always get told from other people what the team's about and stuff like that. But, um, you know, getting to talk to him and hear his method and, and his ideas and how he wants to play, you know, it, it's just tracking me to come. So. And what would you say? I think you've played four games. Is that right? You've played all yeah, four. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest difference that you've seen, if any, between the League of Ireland and your time in the States? Is there anything different that you've noticed on the Uh Yeah, I, I, I would agree. There is a lot of big differences. I would say probably the biggest one is, is just the general intensity and, and the tackling and, you know, obviously the stuff like that because, you know, the level in America is good too, but it's just, you know, because it's not – it's a growing football nation, you know, you come over here and the tackles and just the gamesmanship and, you know, how intense it is over here. Whereas in America, it's more they're trying, every team tries to play, you know, every team, uh, 
will try and play out of the back and they'll try and play expansive football. And, you know, it's not too much about the defensive side over there. Are there are, don't get me wrong, there are good defensive players and teams, but I, I think a majority of the teams just focus on how they play. Whereas over here, you know, it's more of, I think every team obviously tries to win and attack, but over here it's more, it, they take more pride in the defending. You know, defenders are more valued over here, I think. And then you you can see it in the tackles and, you know, some style that certain teams play, you know. And, like, I guess I would say there's no Finn Harps in America, really. You know, they just, you know, that style they play is just very direct and that team right. knows what they like to do and they're not going to try and do something they don't, you know, they're not comfortable with, I guess, so. Yeah, they're known as a, a tough team to come up yeah. against. Like, they mightn't be the best side in the league, you know, technically, but they're tough, It's a, especially Finn Park. That's yeah. Red- a very tough place to go to. Um, of the games you've played so far, which match do you think ended up being the most difficult match for you or for the team? Um, I would yeah. say out of all of them, I would say probably the same paths at home. I think, you know, we just weren't clicking at all. We weren't playing. And I know, obviously, um, you know, we started off with a different formation and, and I think it takes time. And, you know, we were making inroads with it, but sometimes it's just, it was, you know, early in the season and stuff but it's just one of those games that just nothing really went right for us and we never really threatened and you know I think you know that was probably our toughest performance in terms of a lot of people kind of looked at each other and you know looked at ourselves which was good because we needed to be better but um I'd I'd say that I mean I I, to be honest I think we were unlucky in a lot of in a few other games that we should have got results and that's football but uh you know like obviously I would say it's early doors but you know obviously season's on hold right now so um, I think we were really turning a corner and obviously with people coming back out of injury, you know, the strength of the squad was only going to get better. So I thought I watched the game on TV against Shamrock Rovers. I thought the performance from Sly was encouraging there because Rovers are one of the favorites for the league and have started very well. I think it was one all with 15 minutes to go. So I would have taken a lot of encouragement from that game from a Sly perspective. And as you say, it doesn't help when you're going into the season, missing four or five players through injury, particularly in one position. A lot of defenders injured as well, and some of those players are key players, like Lewis Banks, for example. It doesn't help early on, does it? So in a way, this break, if we did get going again, would actually help and benefit Slyo, because I'm sure a lot of those injuries would be cleared yeah. up when we got back, you know? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's it's one of those things, I think it's just there's a silver lining in everything, and if we do come back, um, mm-hmm. you know, obviously ha- having the likes of guys like, you know, then he came back and, and Lewis Banks and stuff like that. And, you know, even having John Mahon back, being able to start his rehab and stuff like, you know, it's just encouraging because all those guys are, are such important pieces to the team and they're only going to make us better. And I think, um, it, yeah, it is a weird situation because it's, you know, we want to be back playing, but then it's almost like, okay, well, this is good because guys can get healthy if we, if we do come back to play. But, um, yeah, no, those guys are so important, and you know they're they've been making great you know progress with their injuries and stuff. And I, you know, like I said, they're only going to make the team better. So, how would you best describe yourself as a player? What would be? Um, I know it's always tough, tough for people to talk about themselves in a way. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I would say like I'm just a simple player. You know, I try and keep it simple. You know, I like the position I play. I don't really need to do anything. You know, I'm not a flair player. I just, I just need to keep the ball for us. I just keep it simple. You know, I, you know, I've always watched players and like Michael Carrick and and Busquets and stuff. And you mm-hmm. know, those are players that I try to, you know, try to emulate on the field. But you know, those guys are, you know, you're never gonna read massive headlines and you know, clip video clips of them and stuff. But what they do with the, the the ball and how they influence the game is just something that you know every footballer can appreciate. So I try my best to do you know, what they do and just keep it simple. And, you know, I'm really more of like a, a cog for the team to facilitate attacking players and stuff like that. So I often find players like that, they don't get the credit they deserve as well. As you say, Carrie can now keeping the play moving is the main thing. I know I'm a Chelsea fan as well. And Jorginho, I know, gets a lot of flack from fans over there. But I actually think in general, he's an important player to that team because he's similar to what you're talking about there. Yeah. And buskets and players like that that those players buskets maybe is appreciated now but it took a long long time for people yeah. to really and, and um you know vital cog in that barcelona team for years so i think players like that are very important as well 
And um, leads me on to actually, who's the most skillful Sligo Rovers player that you've seen in training? The most skillful? Um, there's a few, actually. I'd say Dave Colley's probably the silkiest. Very right. silky player. Uh, Ronan Cochran up top, he's, he's, he's good in a tight space, too. Uh, and then, and then uh, Ryan DeVries, who just came in, he can tell, I think, the first day of training, he made somebody pretty, pretty silky, and you know everyone was looking around and stuff. But uh, yeah, no, we have quite a few to be fair. Yeah, actually, he's I believe is like match. Is that right? Yeah, I th- yeah, yeah. I think just one. So you could count him as an addition, really. Yeah, you know, we miss some strikers, isn't he as well? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, he can play all across the front. I think. Yeah. That's- so you'll need Coughlin is a player of a lot of time for as well. He works his socks off. Up oh from yeah, he, he works very hard, and you know he's got a good strike and a good finish on him and stuff. And he's kind of a striker that he can do. He can do everything, obviously. And I think a lot of what he tries to do, holding up and bringing players into play, is another thing that you know it doesn't get appreci- It doesn't get mentioned, but you know it it helps the team so much. And you know, obviously, like his work rate is is unbelievable for the team. Definitely. Who would you say is the hardest trainer? The hardest trainer? Um, I'd throw myself in there. I'd maybe Johnny Dunleavy, too. Um, yeah. And a lot of the young lads, too, like Niall, Scott Lynch, they work pretty hard. I mean, I think everyone works pretty hard. Uh, but I'd say, I'd say Johnny's probably up there. He's a great professional, great guy, too. You just spoke, you mentioned Niall Morham there. What do you think is how good can he be? Do you think now more him? Oh, he, he's he's a great player. I mean, I think it's he has all the tools to have a great and and long career. And I think the thing that helps him too is that I think a lot of young players, um, it's the thing that they have to learn. Is I think he's a great professional. You know, he takes care of his body. He's a good guy. He works hard. He's humble, and he listens to guys around him when you know. It mm-hmm. may seem like you know guys are getting on to him and young, but he he listens and he's uh, he's just a, he's a good hard worker. And I think that he's got a professional aspect to his game that will help him in the long run, which is something that I think kind of makes or breaks a lot of young players later in their career. So, but yeah, no, he's a great guy. He's a good, great banter too. So uh, he's he's good to have around. Yeah, what impressed me about him was he's a midfielder by trade, but he's slotted into that right back role and he's done a great job at right back, hasn't he? Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's he's like I said, he's just he's got all the great tools as a player, he's a smart player, physical, athletic. So I think it's just if he keeps what he's doing, he's he's gonna you know go on for a long long time. And while you're in isolation, is there anything that you practice by yourself that you say, okay, I could do this better? Now it's time to practice it. Um. Yeah, I mean, with, you know, obviously, like, it's tough with the facilities and stuff because, you know, a lot of fields and stuff are closed. But I think it's just it's just making sure you do something every day. Obviously, we, we have um, fitness plans and stuff that the team give to us that is, you know, that's mandatory that all the players are doing to, to kind of maintain stuff. But I think it's just, um, you know, because this long period of time without, you know, maybe touching a ball or kicking a ball, it's just kind of getting little touches. I mean, personally, obviously, I just try and stay touch, like uh, sharp with like my passes and first touch and stuff like that and tight spaces. But I think as long as you're, you know, doing something on the ball, even if it's just juggling or kicking it against the wall, it's, it's you know, it's, it's going to help in the long run. Right, final question for you. And it's like, I just want to know this one. Who's the dress room clown? <laughs> Who's the dress room clown? Oh, man, the whole team, I would say. Oh, man. Uh, every No, it's honestly, it's everyone's got to... Like everyone's got great banter. Like it's it's yeah. great because I think that helps in in the change room. It's it's not you know no one's left out and everyone everyone gets a piece of it and stuff. And it's you know even like guys like Timu, whose English is getting better. You know it, we get him involved and and he's he's joins in too and stuff. But uh, no, I think I would say it's the whole team really. I mean you know Johnny is you know he's in there all the time. He loves it. I'd say Gary Buckley is probably. I've told Gary Buckley that he, when he's done football, he should be a comedian because he's one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my life. But uh, he's got um, um, unbelievable one-liners. But um, no, I, I'd say everyone, really. Maybe he's practicing right now. It's a good time to... Yeah, I, he, he, he's, he's sending me some funny jokes. He usually sends me a couple of jokes on uh, Snapchat and stuff every day. But no, he's, he's a funny guy and he actually sits next to me in the changing room. So 
But uh, yeah, no, like I said, it's it's great chemistry, and everyone in the, in the change room has got some good laughs and good banter, and you know, no one's left out and stuff. So I think it, you know, it's a little stuff like that that helps in the change room, but it'll help us on the field, you know, because it's uh, everyone's so tight knit. Well, thanks very much for coming on. Really pre- appreciate that. I know the Sligo fans will enjoy watching this, so um, take it easy. And thanks very much. Thanks, no, appreciate it. All the best to you too.